welcome back for today's session. In this session, we are going to discuss about the class Amphibia, which in fact comes under a super class Tetrapods, which are regarded as the animals which bear limbs. In the previous class, we have discussed about the animals which bear fins. That is superclass pieces. Here, tetrapods include four classes. First one is amphibia, followed by reptilia, then apes and mammalia. In that, we are going to discuss first class, that is class amphibia. So here, what does in fact amphibia here refers to? See, amphibia here refers to dual life. Okay, they lead a dual or double life that is they live both on land as well as in water all right let me tell you what is the reason actually they need water for reproduction okay so according to international union for conservation of nature Right? There are more than 6,700 species of amphibians. So here, see, amphibia is a class and the organisms belonging to this class are referred to as amphibians. And there are about, you know, more than in fact 6,700 species according to IUCN. It includes animals like frogs, which we are all familiar with, toads, then salamanders and cilians. So here we are all familiar about frogs and toads, salamanders, you know, they are in fact reptile like amphibians, alright. Then we have cilidians. What are cilidians here? See, these are vermiform, worm-like amphibians. Alright? Or serpentine-like amphibians. Alright? Vermiform or serpentine-like amphibians, generally. Alright? That serpentine is, it indicates as such now, snake-like. These amphibians were the first organisms who have ventured from the water to the land right from the known animals here furthermore let me tell you that this is an important class uh, with respect to you know the organisms which require both water as well as the land for their survival next moving on to the general characters of amphibians Let me tell you first about the habitat and habit. See, they are generally the organisms which survive in freshwater habitats, right? Or even they can be terrestrial. This is about their habitat, okay? The place where they live and coming to their habit, they are generally carnivorous animals. They feed on to the other animals. So, this is about the first important character that is habitat and habit. Next, we have the body form. Their body, the amphibian's body can be compressed or it can be cylindrical. Alright, remember and this compressor cylindrical body can be divided into the in fact head and trunk so trunk what is trunk here it is a central part of the frog to which the limbs and the head is attached remember 
that is what we call the trunk of frog okay head and trunk you know it is divided into moving on to the next that is nostrils here they have a pair of nostrils okay so which are important for olfaction so olfaction here remember, you know refers to sense of smell for the sense of smell or for the olfaction they have well developed nostrils dear friends all right so furthermore let us move on to the skin skin here is very much smooth highly vascular when i am referring to this let me tell you they have well, you no know, black vessels which are well distributed in their skin and to go with that it has many glands all right so for different uh, secretions uh, because of the presence of glands it is uh, much you know um, what we can say moist or can be very sticky you know uh, in nature further skin helps in cutaneous respiration see this is respiration which occurs with the help of skin okay through skin rather so next let us talk about their exoskeleton which is in fact here absent we don't find the exoskeleton at all it is very much a naked exoskeleton in fact as it is not present we generally say it as what naked body without the exoskeleton when we in fact talk about the endoskeleton let me tell you it is very important to note that it is highly bony in nature all right so when i am referring to this understand that the endoskeleton is made up of bones these in fact endoskeleton have two convex cities or we can also refer it to as protuberances or outgrowths rather through which it attaches to the first vertebrae called as atlas so helps in attachment to the first vertebrae that is atlas those are called as convexities or protuberances all right so which are present with respect to the endoskeleton itself dear students here let me tell you the vertebrae can be in three forms one is the first let me tell you here it can be either amphis okay feelers all right all right first is amphicelus or it can be procelus all right or it can be ophistocelus all right the vertebrae of amphibians can be in three forms one is amphicelus second is procelus or ophistocelus let me mention few important parts pertaining to uh, points pertaining to these endoskeleton structures that is the vertebrae when you talk about the procelus let me tell you the procelus it is having you know concave end at anterior position and convex at the posterior position all right of the vertebrae if the vertebrae towards its anterior topmost part anterior if it is concave and towards the lower end that is posterior if it is convex then we call that type of vertebrae as procelous vertebrae all right secondly let us say about the amphicelous all right so this is giving indication for the central part of the vertebrae what you call centrum central part of the vertebrae is called centrum so this centrum is concave on the both anterior and posterior side the central part of the vertebrae called centrum is 
concave on the anterior as well as the posterior end. That we call it to as amphicelous vertebrae. Furthermore, dear students, we have ophistocelous vertebrae as well. It is very simple. The centrum towards one end, all right, can be convex or flat. That is, let us say, anterior end. It can be convex or flat. Or towards the posterior end, it is concave. All right, convex or flat at one end, and uh, towards one more end, it can be. concave all right so these are the different types of vertebrae which we can find with respect to the amphibians so till here what are the characters we have discussed their habitat is fresh water or terrestrial okay especially moist regions then we can say their habit as carnivorous their body is cylindrical or compressed having head and trunk then of our own faction they have two nostrils For cutaneous respiration, skin is present, and also for secretions, glands are as well present in the skin. Then exoskeleton is absent. Endoskeleton is bony, and it is attached to the vertebrae. First vertebrae through two protuberances or convexities or outbursts called as, you know, generally we say as such. So they are attached to the atlas, which is the first vertebrae. All right. So remember, the vertebrae can be in three forms. That is, amphicelous, procelous, or ophistocelous. Next, we have locomotion. Here, locomotion is through two pairs of pentadactyl limbs. When I say pentadactyl limbs, let me tell you. these limbs have five digits okay in them so this is what we refer it to as pentadactyl penta means five dactyl here it is referring to digits in the limb so each limb okay will have five digits in it they are generally well modified for swim in the water they are webbed feet okay so next let me tell you here are few examples you need to remember see we have under amphibians apodans a group of organisms called apodans like for example ichthyophis right where one or both limbs can be absent either one will be absent or both can also be absent that is what we call ichthyophis generally we refer ichthyophis as a limbless amphibia all right next let me give you one more example here siren siren here is an example where both pairs of limbs are absent compulsorily both pairs of the limbs are absent here with respect to siren then further with respect to mud eel hind limbs are absent Are you getting my point, children? Here, see, apodans like ichthyophis, where one or both limbs can be absent. Siren, both the pairs of limbs are absent. Mud eel, only the hind limbs are absent. Remember, because we are talking about locomotion, let me tell you, there will be few ex uh, exceptions which we need to take into consideration. next moving on to the digestive system here it is very well developed right so first of all let me tell you it has a very large mouth which is beset with teeth you know the teeth are present you know generally in the jaws they have jaws to which the teeth are attached or generally we use the word beset or beset here means to get attached all right or uh, suspended along with the in fact teeth that is what the meaning here is okay so further what we need to understand here is that 
you know the teeth can be fused to the inner side of the jaw bone if they are fused to the inner side of the jaw bone we call them as pleurodont fused to inner side of jaw bone this is one condition when we talk about the arrangements of uh, teeth in the jaws of, of amphibians or they can be uniform in their structure if they are uniform in their structure we call them as homodont this is uniform in structure that means they look similar if they look similar and their arrangement is also accordingly you know uh, similar in nature then we call them to as homodonts all right this type of arrangement can also be seen in the case of amphibians jaws all right dear friends if the teeth are replaced many times okay then we call them as polydont teeth are replaced many times okay these are the three conditions with respect to the arrangement of teeth okay and uh, how you know the teeth can in fact uh, arise in life time pleurodont so it means to say to the inner side of the jaw bone the teeth are attached homodont homo means uniform similar okay if they are uniform in structure if they are of uh, their structure size is same or similar we call them to as homodont if the teeth you know if they arise are replaced many times you know then we call that condition as polydont here remember the tongue is generally protrusible what do we mean by protrusible here the tongue can be extended outwards and suddenly it can again be brought back to the normal position that is what we call protrusible tongue which is important to uh, get its prey all right to derive its nutrition it's very important to catch its uh, prey all right to feed on to it protrusible tongue is very much necessary in case of most of the amphibians all right children so furthermore let me tell you it's very important to note that as i tell you when i say well developed digestive system it is obvious that they will have the alimentary you know the tubular structure which starts from the mouth and it ends with cloaca here so what is cloaca it is a common opening for alimentary canal urinary tracts and reproductive tracts so starts with the mouth the alimentary canal and ends with the cloaca or leads to cloaca finally so cloaca has you know it a common opening for the end opening for of alimentary canal or urinary tract and reproductive tract so this is about their digestive system all right which is very well developed next we have one more important character here that is these organisms are referred to as poikilotherms or ectotherms or rather we can use one more term that is these organisms are cold blooded animals that means to say that their body temperature changes to the environment where they live okay so according to the environment wherever they are present so that the body temperature okay will fluctuate if that is the case we call that as poikilotherms or poikilothermic animals or ectothermic animals or rather one more word we can use cold blooded animals here their rbcs or you know erythrocytes are biconvex and nucleated when i say biconvex you know they are convex towards both ends all right so that is one aspect and they are nucleated they have compulsorily the nucleus in them say for example consider our rbcs in the case of human beings which belong to mammals you know we don't have the nucleus in the rbcs 
Uh, all right, uh, that one that's one point. But in initial stages, there will be nucleus in the RPC, but later it will become enucleated in case of human beings. But here, completely from the beginning till the end, it will have you know the nucleated RBCs. Remember, that's very important. Next, coming to the circulatory system, they have heart which is three chambered. It has two auricles and one ventricle. Alright? So these are the three chamber chambers of the heart in case of amphibians. They have in these chambers sinus venosus. Alright? And secondly, truncus arteriosus. So what are what are all these three? The first chamber is called as the sinus venosus. It's the first chamber. It is the pacemaker. I am using the word pacemaker because it helps in contraction of heart. This first chamber, what you call it, as sinus venosus in case of amphibians. Secondly, truncus arteriosus. So it receives the impure blood. Right. So remember these points as well. Next, moving on to their respiratory system. See, it is uh, you know uh, very much different when compared to the other organisms. They may have gills as their respiratory organs or lungs. All right. And further, it can also be buccopharyngeal region. Alright, we can say that or region or cavity you can refer it to as. Alright, so even other than this, skin can also act as the respiratory structure in case of amphibians. Note few points here. Gills are respiratory organs in case of larvae. It may or may not persist in case of adults. Alright, generally absent in adults, certain things it may persist or it may not persist as, as I tell you generally. Okay, so remember that one point and generally it can have lungs. Okay, buccopharyngeal cavity. So what it is referring to? It is pertaining to mouth and pharynx. The cavity of mouth and pharynx which also participates in the process of respiration with respect to the amphibians. To go with that, skin which helps in cutaneous respiration which I have already spoken before. Alright? So this is the respiratory system of the amphibians. Moving on to the excretory system. Let me tell you, they have pair of kidneys, alright, for elimination of the nitrogenous waste from their body, they have the excretory organs in the form of kidneys. Okay, what is the uh, major nitrogenous waste, waste which is produced? Ureotelic organisms we refer, so urea, okay, is the chief excretory Okay, a waste which is uh, produced in the body of amphibians. The kidneys are mesonephric. So remember that means they are formed from the intermediate body wall or the germ layer, primary germ layer what you call the mesoderm. Intermediate mesoderm helps in the formation of the excretory organs in the case of amphibians. That's why we use the term mesonephric. Okay, coming to the sense organs. So, I have already spoken about pair of nails or nostrils. This help in olfaction. That means in the process of smell or uh, the you know smelling, uh, you know, it helps. So that we generally refer it to as olfaction for the detection of odors. It is important, right? So other than this, they have pair of eyes. So, these eyes are provided with movable eyelids. So, this is also an important 
sensory organ which we can find here. Other than this, one more important sensory organ is tympanum. So, this tympanum is generally it is like a ear. So, this represents the ear. So, let me repeat. Sense organs here, major sense organs are nostrils or nares which are paired, paired. So, help in sense of smell called olfaction, first point. They have pair of eyes, okay, with movable eyelids. Tympanum, it is similar or it represents the actual ear of the amphibians, alright. Then coming to the cranial nerves. When I say cranial nerves, please do understand that these are the nerves which directly emerge from the brain. Alright. So here it is 10 pairs. 10 pairs of cranial nerves directly arise from the brain. Fertilization. Next is we have fertilization. See, when we talk about reproduction, here generally sexual reproduction is seen and Sexes are separate. Fertilization here it is generally external. I have already told you that it occurs in water. Water is very much needed for their reproduction. But it can be internal in few cases, dear student. There is you know exemption here. We, we need to understand. So in case of opponents, right, it can be internal. But majorly or usually the Fertilization, if you find here, is the external type of fertilization. Next, coming to the development, we are well aware of it. So, development is here indirect. So, we all know what is indirect development here. So, it has to pass through the larval stages. The larval stages here is represented by tadpole larva. We have the larval stages called tadpole larva here which is very important to note and also it can be asked in your examination as well okay note on all these points okay in order next coming to nature of birth here they are oviparous animals that means they are egg laying animals all right then uh, the nourishment of embryo is provided with the yolk, alright. So, yolk which is in fact present within the egg, alright, provides the nutrition for the developing embryo, alright. And here extra embryonic membranes, like for example, we have four, right? We have amnion, chorion, alright, allantois to go with even yolk sac. All these four extra embryonic membranes which also participate in so many process of nourishment, alright, and the reproductive process are completely absent with respect to the amphibians. So we call them as extra embryonic membranes. So remember, yolk is necessary for providing the nutrition for the development of the, uh, the developing embryo okay they show two important processes one is hibernation when i say hibernation let me tell you it is also called a winter sleep so here it is a dormant stage all the activities metabolic and physiological activities of the animal is suspended due to intense winter so that can be seen here or even we can find estivation when I say estivation, it is called summer sleep. So during deep summers, alright, the animals undergo dormancy, okay, or their metabolic and physiological activities will be suspended in the deep summers. That is called estivation, alright. So these are the few important characteristic features you need to remember with respect to the phylum amphibia, okay. What are the examples which you can bring out here? Let me tell you firstly, Rana or what you call it as generally from then Bufo or we generally call Bufo as what? Tot, alright? Hyla we have which is called as 
tree tree frog okay we also have rachophorus it is called as flying frog remember all these four all right are in fact remember that they don't have the tail tail is absent okay rana or frog but you refer it as buffo or tod hyla or tree frog rachophorus or flying frog okay then limbed and tailed okay limbed and tailed amphibians let me say for example salamandra all right which is called as in general as what salamander it is in fact like a reptile okay uh, then uh, if you want to give few more example we have limbless amphibian right so which is the limbless amphibian we are well familiar with ichthyophis right so these four are not having the tail all right these have both tail and the limbs they don't have limbs at all so like ichthyophis which is a, like a pollen okay so these are few examples and the general characteristics of the phylum amphibia okay class reptilia let us understand few introductory aspects about the class reptilia the animals belonging to this class are called as reptiles according to international union for conservation of nature okay so around or more than around you know more than or around 9400 species of reptiles are present okay it is uh, around uh, 2001 and 2012 so many but many species as we all know are endangered are becoming extinct okay because of various uh, inhuman activities but just remember around 2001 and 12 we had more than 9400 species according to the international union for conservation of nature dear students these reptiles are regarded regarded as the first true terrestrial vertebrates they are very well adapted to the terrestrial environments all right that's why you know we regard them as the first true terrestrial vertebrates furthermore see they dominated the earth 200 million years ago all right so what we say the jurassic period of mesozoic era They very much dominated the earth. All right, remember this. In fact, this you know era or this Mesozoic era, Jurassic period is referred to as Golden Age of reptiles. All right, the students remember the animals belonging to the class Reptilia are referred to as reptiles. and according to iucn more than 9400 species are present around 2011 and 12 they are the first true terrestrial vertebrates around 200 million years ago they dominated the earth during the jurassic period in fact that period or mesozoic era is referred to as the golden age of reptiles all right so this is the introduction about the class reptilia dear students next let us move on to the general characters of the class reptilia all right 
Here, coming to the first character that is habitat and habit. See, always uh, whenever you study any class or any phylum or any, in fact, uh, division. So, remember that in order, you know, with these highlighted points you study, it becomes crystal clear for you people to understand. So, here the habitat, as I said you, is terrestrial. See, the, I have already told you that these are the first vertebrates which are well adapted to the terrestrial regions, right? So, they are primarily, or, you know, majorly, they are adapted to the terrestrial environments, but secondarily, they can also be adapted to the water, alright? But, let me tell you, dear students, that for breeding and also for egg laying from the water, if they are secondarily adapted also, they have to come back to the land, to the terrestrial environment and there they have to complete these two aspects, okay? So anyway, so this is about habitat and habit. Moving to their body form. They can be, you know, long and cylindrical. The first, you oh know, body form. Or they can be short and broad. Let me say, for example, long and cylindrical. Let us say, like, for example, we have crocodile or let us say for example short and broad we have the turtle or tortoise okay so these two body forms can be seen with respect to the reptiles next moving on to the skin all right so here skin is uh, dry all right rough and it is provided with scales dear students it is also non-glandular. No glands are generally present in the skin. See, these scales are important to note down. Right? We can say this as bony scales or also we can refer them to as bony scutes. Right? Or one more term we can use epidermal scales also. You can refer them to as because they arise from the uh, epidermis of the skin. So, that is why epidermal scales also we can refer them to as. See, in case of for example, let us say we have snakes and lizards we have here. So, these snakes and lizards have the process of ectasis or molding. We already know that, you know, the periodic shedding of skin or the scales is called ectasis or molding which can be seen here with respect to snakes and lizards they shed their scales periodically next we have the endoskeleton here the reptile's endoskeleton is bony ok it is made up of bones let me tell you they have this endoskeleton is connected to the vertebrae ok through a single Okay, protuberance, alright, or convexity, alright, to connect this endoskeleton to the vertebrae, okay, there is one outgrowth or protuberance or you can also say as convexity, only single, that's why it is called as monocondylar endoskeleton, okay, in the case of the other class that is amphibians we had discussed it was bicondylar. So there were two protuberances or two convexities to connect the endoskeleton to the vertebrae. Here it is only one. And note that the vertebrae here can be procellus, alright, or it can be amphicellus as well, or opistocellus or even a sealers. So, this is pertaining to the vertebrae, the structure, how the structure is. pro -sealers. At one end it is convex and at the other end it is concave. Amphicillus, there is a centrum or the center of the vertebrae, okay, will be both sides concave, okay, that is anterior end, the posterior end of the centrum or the central part of the vertebrae is concave that is amphicillus 
Ophistocelus. See here, the centrum again, or the center of the vertebrae. At one end, it is flat or convex, and the one more end, it is generally concave. All right. Then A sealers. A sealers. Remember here. The ends of the centrum, both anterior and posterior, are flat. So this, these points may be important for your competitive examinations like NEET and JIPMOR and other exams as well. Okay? Then they have two sternum. You know, sternum is a bone. Okay? Centermost bone. Say, for example, in our body, in the thoracic cavity, we have the bone at the center of the thoracic cavity to which the ribs are attached here also it helps in the attachment of ribs but in few it is absent like for example in snakes all right the sternum is absent and chelonians so this includes the tortoises as well as the turtles we don't find the sternum in these two cases of reptiles coming to their locomotion they have two pairs of pentadactyl limbs pentadactyl limbs penta five five digits having limbs are present so these limbs will have powerful okay horny claws these claws are important for uh, so many ways like predation for climbing for running and so many right so these limbs in fact have the powerful claws remember that okay in tortoise you know limbs are modified into paddles you know paddles help in swim swimming all right in case of tortoise all right so and in snakes we don't have limbs limbs are absent right so it is limbless reptile okay snake remember two important exemptions here with respect to locomotions tortoise in the case of tortoise you know the limbs are modified into paddles for swimming and in, uh, in case of snakes limbs are completely absent coming to their digestive system it is very well developed when i say well developed it possesses the alimentary canal this alimentary canal leads to cloacal see chamber Cloacal chamber already I have told you cloaca or cloacal chamber is the common opening for alimentary canal, urinary tract as well as reproductive tracts. So alimentary canal at last leads to cloacal chambers and the mouth okay is very large here and both jaws in the case of mouths mouths rather is provided with teeth. Or they are beset with teeth. So this is about their digestive system, dear students. Next character is, you know, these organisms are phyllotherms or ectotherms. That means they are cold-blooded organisms, and their body temperature fluctuates according to the environment where they live or where they survive. All right. So that's one important aspect. And coming to the erythrocytes or RBCs, here it is nucleated. That means it has the nucleus, and the shape can be either oval or biconvex. See, biconvex already we know. Towards both the ends, it is uh, concave. Uh, sorry, convex ends it has. Then, apart from that. Let us move on to the circulatory system, which is heart. It is three-chambered. It has 
two auricles and one ventricle. So this can be seen with respect to almost all the reptiles, but there are exceptions here as well. So we have crocodile which has four chambers in it in its heart. Alright? Two auricles to go with two ventricles. So alright, so this is with respect to the uh, circulatory system. Coming to the respiratory system, dear students, let me tell you they are provided with well developed lungs. But there are exceptions here as well. So cloacal chamber is the respiratory organ with respect to turtles. Okay? This is the exception. But almost all the other reptiles will have lungs as the respiratory organs. Coming to the excretory system. So they have pair of kidneys through which the elimination of nitrogenous waste occurs okay, in the landforms. We can see the uric acid as the chief excretory waste whereas in aquatic forms it is urea. Alright. So the landforms are the uricotelic organisms. Right? Then aquatic are ureotelic organisms. Right? So also remember they are provided with renal portal system. So it supplies the blood to the in fact renal tubules in the absence of glomerular filtration. Okay. So here we can find this type of system. Okay, to go with this, let me also tell you about the sense organs. They have well developed eyes, ear and nose. So these are the major sense organs with respect to the, you know, reptiles. Okay, here a few points if you want to remember, let me tell you. Here the eyes can perceive perceive the colored vision ok so note this point next let us discuss about the cranial nerves the nerves which arise from the brain so it is 12 pairs alright it uh, you know it is generally 12 pairs of nerves which arise from the brain next we have the fertilization which is here it is internal. Internal when I say dear students, remember that the fusion of male and female gametes occurs inside the female body. Next, we have the development which is okay, direct, direct development. That means without any larval stages, the organism develops. Coming to the nature of birth. Nature of birth, most of the organisms here are oviparous, that means they are egg laying animals. But here also we have few exceptions, let us say for example, we have wine snakes, we have vipers or sea snakes, where we can find that these organisms are viviparous, alright, belonging to the class Reptilia, alright. They have Cleodoic eggs. So their eggs are covered by calcareous shell. The, if they are covered as such, then we refer that to as cleodoic eggs. Then nourishment to the embryo, when you consider, they have all the four extra embryonic membrane. That is, they have allantois. Okay. Then they have amnion. Corion and yolk sac. All these four membranes are called extra embryonic membranes. They provide the protection to the embryo. 
they provide the nutrition to the embryo to go with even excretory functions also it performs of the embryo all right so it is well developed in case of this uh, class furthermore dear friends okay let me tell you the examples for the same okay we have callots okay or callots are generally called as garden lizard okay so which is a reptile hemidactylus okay it is called as wall lizard which we see in our home okay generally everyone might have the definitely seen crocodilus so which is in fact crocodile all right to go with this we also have naja okay i shall write here so naja means to say that it is a cobra naja naja or naja bangarus we have all right bangarus bangarus means great it's a reptile all right dear students okay to go with that we have vipers we have chameleons we have to go with that tortoise then we have uh, uh, draco or the flying lizard all these are the few examples which you can consider for the class reptiles please to uh, listen the class with uh, attention it's a kind request and take down the points thank you very much